Yes. Okay, hey, okay. hold on a sec. So I'm, I'm going to record this so we just have a good record of this. So if you don't mind, I'm just recording. Yeah, go. Over. Okay, go ahead. So Ideas uh, on a CNC torch table. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, CNC in general. So one of the big control problems uh, is the ground loops and everything that's going on in this machines, which usually if you don't have electronics done right, presents quite a lot of problems. Uh-huh. So I'm trying to rethink this, that we should, at least in our design, we're having motors and controllers, or at least separate drivers, we want to have them integrated in the trolleys themselves, not in a separate box, uh -huh. or at the end of the construction, which means that... Uh, That's the current way that you're... Hold on, just, just for clarity. Uh, so integration into the trolleys themselves via wireless is what you're considering currently or with wires? Uh, just considering how to do it. So one option is no more normal RF wireless, which might not work well in such environments where you have spindles, uh, you know, frequency controlled motors, uh, plasma gutters and all that. I, I don't want to really go there with wireless and try to make it very reliable. So optics is another problem. Now, one option is using uh, infrared links, um, such as similar to the ones that are TV remotes, but just higher bandwidth, just doing it free space, uh, which should work well to some extent. But you know, also because we're going into high dust environments and stuff like that, uh, might not always be very reliable. So the latest idea is we should try to reuse uh, TOSLIC optical cables for the communication uh, in this case. So they're you know, plastic optical fibers, um, which you can buy anywhere you use for audio video systems normally. Uh, and we could easily build add-ons that support this. Yeah, so you and could kind of extend conventional controller boards with the optical link instead of the cable between the board and the separate driver. Uh, so, op there's optical fibers, so you said wired optical fibers or wireless optical? Wired optical fibers. Wired optical. And yeah. the issues on noise for the, the electronics there, is, are you concerned about that? Well, there are no electronics issues then because you run fiber into potentially you know, a metal enclosure and you've got no problems there. Um. And any of the noise from the, the plasma cutter? Yeah, uh, noise from plasma cutter can't couple into the optical fiber, so uh, you're kind of safe. Noise can't couple into the optical fiber, but, but as far as the board, that's much less to worry about because there's just much less wiring on the board itself. So in general, when, no, when there's... You have a board on the trolley, so yeah. you've got stepper motor, stepper driver, and some board which couples optical fiber to that board. Right means that um, that piece can be inside a metal box, actually. Uh, when you say metal box, you mean that's RF shielded? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And if it were not RF shielded, there would be some issues from the board picking up noise? Uh, not necessarily. Okay. Yeah, I'm into... This is something we would need to find out experimentally. And what's the advantage of the the optical? Is the lack of noise going through optical, right? Yeah, like you've got no that sounds problems. Yeah, I mean, to me right now that sounds like a great idea. How technically more complicated is it? Is um, it? We just need to develop the interface between the optical and um, stepper driver controller, which is not too complicated. Not many people have done something like that, but stuff is more or less readily available to do it. So, uh, and you're a, and you're on the forefront of those ki that kind of innovation with your optical link, right? So you're you're the guy to do this. Uh, yeah. Well, there's not much optical involved here. You just buy the transceiver, which is yeah. a connector at the same time. So just need to put the microcontroller on it and just uh, do some communication. Magic, but not a lot actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How confident are you that, that you can work this out in a time period of what is it? You're talking about a couple of weeks or four weeks? or 
what's a what's a what kind of time do you think it will take you to to develop this? I'm sorry, you cut out. Can you can you say that again? Um, I, yeah, we can get to prototype stage in the next month or two uh, with this, so it shouldn't be too big of a problem. <laughs> okay, and as far as so, uh, does that mean that is that so that means a working working cutting machine at that time or so so basically no we can have a working machine before that uh huh but you got uh, and we'll, we'll see what kind of problems due to the noise we may observe in this case i see so as a, as the next step after that you're looking at at this so you're yeah, hoping yes. that we can have some prototype working by that time already uh huh what kind of results are you hoping for from the the prototype if you have that working i mean in, if I mean, if you're assuming that it's not gonna be robust enough, that you might get troubles here and there. Well, we might need to spend quite some extra effort trying to make it reliable and do electronics properly, grounding and all that stuff, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. so we don't get too many problems. Right. Uh, and like, if we manage to solve this with optics, then maybe we can use uh, high frequency ignition plasma, which could mean. Maybe you don't even need a Z-axis later on. So um, that's something to consider. Wait, wait, wait. You wouldn't need the Z-axis for what reason? Why wouldn't you need it? Plasma cutter, because you could use the high frequency uh, arc, uh, which, you know, you don't need contact start for it. No, but you do You do understand the that that's not acceptable for large work pieces with that warp? Yeah, yeah that, that's definitely true, but just thinking of simplifying it in a like, basic state if, if need be. Oh, so you're saying simplification for small work pieces if need be? Yeah, yeah, like you don't need an extra axis. Yeah, uh, yeah, you don't yeah. need it. It's not, at that point, it's not critical. I mean, uh, when we cut out the the wheel mounting plates for the tractors a few years ago, there was no z-height control on that we just set the height and for small work pieces it's perfectly fine i mean the quality yeah. goes down just a little bit because uh, if it's not at the right height you get a little edge less less clean edges but it works yeah so yeah that, that's actually the point if okay then we have a very very simple version of it yeah 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 that's doable for for certain small pieces it wouldn't do for for like cuttings for example one eighth inch steel for the hopper on a brick press because that True. that can yeah, warp yeah. and yeah okay yeah so this is something i'd really like to explore because no one seems to have done it so far and it appears to be an okay idea uh which part the optical optical coupling the optical yeah no that's i think that would be great that would definitely get you potential advantages on the wiring which otherwise has to be shielded. Yeah, yeah. Like wiring is not a simple thing. Otherwise, and you need optical couplers and stuff like this. And here you build them inherently just by yeah building the link. I like. It. So the other things are that I just wanted to. Yeah. Any any more information on this or yeah, I I like it. Uh, no, that's pretty much it for now. Like costs will be I don't know like a few dollars per axis connection so not much a few dollars for the transceiver no for like, like the whole links to trans transmitter receiver plus the optical cables and all of that only a few bucks per per axis yeah yeah shouldn't be more uh-huh what kind of uh what kind of a receive uh a receiver is it just a basically a light just a little solar cell little no, diode like you get purposely built receivers for this already yeah and they're those are diodes photodiodes typically or or what are they well yeah well, like in one package you've got a, either laser or an led not sure what's actually inside the package and the other is some kind of a photodiode okay but you know you buy this packages sealed with optical connectors on them already so yeah okay great and those are like a few bucks yeah like it's less than a dollar for each normally Okay. And plus a cable, so that's a few bucks in total. Yeah, excellent, excellent. 
Um, okay, so so the only other issue on a torch table is um, the concerns for when you have the if you're doing piercing and the big volcano of molten stuff comes on a pierce event. Uh, what are your thoughts on the? So if you have the little belts which are pretty much plastic, some kind of a composite plastic or rubber. You know, putting something like you know the dog collar you put around when he yeah. has an operation or something like that. Yeah. Just that conical shape. Just put that around the head and don't worry about it. Um. Okay, something to that effect. So, so, but yeah, that's that's actually a, a big issue. That to to have a wor nice working table, we got to make sure that those sparks. I mean, sometimes, so if a spark lands on your belt, you you can fry it. You know. Yeah. So that's why you know just having a shield around the head and just not worrying about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So so you, that's definitely on your radar as a as a significant issue, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we'll see. If we can work it out so it's mounted around the head, that would be perfect. Yeah. But obviously, we need to figure something else out. Excellent. Okay. Uh, that solves. That's that's my main question. the The main question for me is, can we actually use this torch table scaled to about the five by ten foot cutting size, which is the size of the sheets for the hopper for the thin sheet metal for the brick press? We need to have it five by ten feet. Should so, be no problem. Okay. Excellent. But yeah. you, you guys are testing on the test test models that you are doing. You are testing it up to what scale? We're Just doing like... now one by one meter. Mm -hmm. Are you guys gonna do a bigger bigger prototype for yourselves, or, or that's that's where you're gonna leave it for now? Uh, we'll actually see. Uh, we probably will do a bigger one late, later on, but at the moment uh, we don't have that big stuff to cut, so maybe not. Okay. But you know. Increasing this is literally just putting in longer tubes at some point. Yeah, which but definitely takes maybe an hour. Yeah, I mean definitely, definitely, and we want to make sure that there's not the sag or anything like that. Any issues we don't expect upon scaling, because that you always have to test. And there will be no sag. We tried running the machine with a guy standing on the head, and that was no problem. Okay. Did the so, machine actually was it was it able to move move the person? Yeah, with this tiny G. The tiny belts were able to move a person? Yeah. Oh, wow. Do you have that videotaped? That would be a good... I do, I do somewhere. Oh, man. Thing. Put that on the web. Uh, that's spectacular. Uh, it's not a good video because it was more, as, more of a joke, but still. No, I mean, that's that's perfect entertainment for the masses that are following this. Uh, here's the link. Oh, oh yeah. wow. Yeah, hold on, it's... I'm looking at it. Low connection, let's see. Oh, wow. Oh, that's amazing. Holy cow, that's a, that little belt does that? Yeah. How can I do that? What's the belt rated for? I mean... Who knows? It's a Chinese belt with wow. no specs on it. I mean, you know, like assuming that the weight is perfectly on it then it's just the friction of the bearings but man that is pretty impressive still right i mean you're probably talking about maybe like yeah i don't know like 30 this is perfect. yeah i mean you know if, if all the weight is vertically down just the friction i mean the friction might be like i don't know like 10 20 kilos maybe possibly yeah 10 kilos maybe that's so good. if you think of it this weight is then well, yeah, it's about 10 kilos per bearing, easily. Yeah, no, that's that's pretty interesting. Um, do you have a link? Can you send me? Can you send a link to the be to the be actual belt? I just want to take a look at the, its specs. Just a GT2 belt, like I, I linked you GT2? the blog post about this, where you have some quick tests. 
score, like positioning, like acceleration, and stuff like that. Have a look at that and comment on it if you want to. Yeah. Or maybe you have that last time. I'm not sure about it. Um. Hello. Welcome. I guess I'm the speaker. So I'm, I was going to uh, kick. That's uh. That's uh, okay. Is that the one before? Or that's a new post. That's. Uh, here's the link April. to the belt. Mhm. Mm Six millimeter width. Quarter inch belt. Huh. Huh. Wow, that's. Did... When you when you did this with that belt, did the belt have any damage on it? No, no, not at all. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty good. Can you still hear me there? Can you still hear me? Yeah, sorry there. Yeah, Cut he out. died on me. Okay. Um, yeah, no, that's that's great. No damage on the belt. What what'd you say after that? Um, uh, um Yeah, no idea welcome? what the yes, I'm for, like what this is rated for, but um just trying to find the information now. It's JT two time belt. It says breaking strength of the belt is Six newtons per one millimeter. Whatever that's supposed to mean. Eighty-six newtons per millimeter. Well, I don't understand that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Per anyway. millimeter of belt thickness. Newtons is a force. No. Uh, per belt width, I would say. So eighty-six so. newtons per one millimeter of belt width. Yeah, yeah. So that's then six times. Uh, yeah, so that's about 500 newtons so like, for 6 millimeter belt. New, 500 newtons is like the weight of 50 kilograms? Yep. Wow, okay. Yeah, that's, that's about right. Excellent, okay. Um, yeah, anything else on the torch table? That's great progress, wow. looks very positive. I think the optics, if you can get it to work, that would be great. But before that, you're just doing wired connections? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that prototype, are you, what's your schedule currently on? What's your uh, goal for? Well, we're doing that stage now, so hopefully next week we can start cutting and testing with it. 
uh, when you get the plasma cutter sorted. Um, and the Z stage is uh, you you got that ordered already? No, we're just building it right now. Um, you're building that, but as far as the controller itself, you're gonna test it prior to the controller. First, yeah, or? we're going to drive directly that from the controller, and then we'll get the plasma, you know, measurement torch height controller and wire that in as well. Uh huh. So that the torch controller, you're getting to ready to order that like in the next few days. Uh yeah, tomorrow I think. Okay. Okay, great, and that should arrive uh, like within a few days to you, and then after the yeah, okay. So next week we need to go to the like reseller of this plasma cutters to test with different ones and stuff like that <laughs> to actually find uh, what different plasma cutting. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. Very nice. The Z stage, can you hear me? No. Can you hear me now? Oh yeah. Now we're back. Um, let's see, the Z stage, some of the design specifications for that are... So you, are you, it's going to be metal in a final version? This is prototype or...? Yeah, this is just a prototype, which we can build with, you know, CNC and plasma cutter, after the CNC and laser cutter we have at hand. So, so basically a, a strapping machine? For now, it's just made out of whatever we can make it out, mm -hmm. and later on we'll make it out of metal. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, uh, and this is pretty much reusing parts from a 3D printer for that Z stage. Are you looking? I mean, when you look at, I see your your linear bearings there. I mean, that's is that the kind of bearing you you're gonna use in the final, or uh, do you know? Probably. Like, if this works, why not? Yeah. Excellent. Uh, these are very low cost ones, you know. So. How much are those linear bearings there? Uh, less than a buck. And the shaft shafts are what, like eight millimeters? Twelve. Twelve. Twelve millimeter? Okay. Yeah, but it could easily do eight, like it doesn't make much difference. Okay. Very nice. And just an M eight threaded rod for the drive of it. Mm-hmm. Or actually M six. Using pieces that are lying around, more or less. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that that's it for the plasma cutter. Okay. Um, when are you looking at the 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 holding of the torch, kind of cantilevered, like close to the verticals, or like how how far away, like ten centimeters away from the verticals, vertical posts, or? Do you know? Yeah, as close as possible we get to it. Um, wait, actually, if you open the presentation, um, so the Google presentation we have on the torch table. Um, we added details there. Let me just find the link for it. Do you need it? Uh, send it if you got it. Let's see if I can find it faster. I found it already. And, and a Dropbox link? That's the same one. picture that you inserted there that's just from some other machine yeah yeah mm-hmm 
Yeah. Yeah. And bearings that are stationary in the actual axis moves up and down. Oh, uh, let's see. I'm looking at page 13. So how is that? Let's see. So you've got the, the bottom. The moves up and down with the threaded rod. The what moves up and down? Motor and the assembly that's on the linear rods moves up and down. So see, uh, bearings are statically mounted. Yeah, to I see. Very nice. That's actually. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, that's um. Wow. Uh, oh man, I like it. I've never seen anything like it. I. <laughs> it's just making stuff simpler. Much wow. Simpler we've seen. Oh man, this is getting good. Yeah. No, I think. Um, you guys are really nailing the simplicity aspects. Cool, thanks. Needs to be simpler as well. Oh man. It's at the moment. Yeah. So, so the if you compare it to existing systems, um, an existing system typically has some weird slides that are complicated. Here, you're just using the sleeve bearings, which are, I mean, that's absolutely as simple as you can get, and just the bottom platform moves up yeah. and down i like it oh man that's good i mean you can move that if that's the case then the platform the the torch can be really close to the uh, as close to that threaded rod as possible yeah, um, yeah like and you don't get centimeters away from it and you don't get spatter issues because the the all the rod the drive element is hidden by that platform itself so you can yeah yeah, yeah that's really nice and the nicest yeah. part is you can put as long threaded rod and as long linear, you know, uh, rails as possible. Huh. Uh, meaning that you, can, you know, you can very easily vary the length or well, height of the axis. So if you were to use this as a three D printer, you just make this half a meter long, and you know, you can do stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I really like it. That's great. Yeah. Um, I like the the modularity adaptability. That's that's right on. Love it. Perfect. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I'll build that. Awesome. I'll build that any day. That's that's my style. <laughs> All right. Uh huh. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Um, cool. Yeah. So that's it for this week, more or less. Okay. From this. Um, are we getting on with the? Brick press. Okay, brick press. So uh, no, we don't have news on a brick press. The the concept here is that as we get so we we're getting Yorick to help us on an aquaponic greenhouse structure to to help teach us on. We're gonna do it in FreeCAD and Blender. So we're okay. gonna generate a tutorial on FreeCAD and Blender as a result, and we're hoping that as we we don't have any anybody to do the brick press right now, but. Okay as we educate the peop our people and put on training courses. So actually we're gonna put a first webinar for basically for OSC ambassadors like next week, about a week from now. So okay. we're gonna start educating people so that eventually we can get a work team doing, um, doing the brick press in open software. Um, okay. How about you guys? You guys wanna do any redesign of it for what well, we talked about or? Uh... Africa, then yes. Otherwise, okay. we need to do other work. Uh, project funding through the that that grant that we were talking about. That. Uh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So trying to see what what kind of funding they will come up with for it. If they manage to do it, then we are happy to go ahead. Okay. Um. Yeah. The question. Oh, yeah. Did you manage to check out Onshape? Like uh, no, I didn't. I didn't really look at it. I didn't. I didn't okay. get a chance. But I would still argue that might be better than FreeCAD. Yeah. So do consider it before you go writing all the tutorials for that stuff. Okay. Okay. Um, 
can consider looking into that. Yeah, because it's you know it's also collaborative, so you can actually yeah. as a community you can do stuff. Yeah, I'll take a look at that. We yeah we want to use all the different tools that are available, especially if it's easily portable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Okay. From my perspective, that's second best bet to SolidWorks, which is expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the Onshape is free for open projects? Well, it's not open source, but it's free for use. What's their business model? They they charge regular customers and it's free for open source? They charge for closed files. Okay. So, as long as you have open files, it's fine. Okay. But you don't care, so. Yep. Uh, yeah, the question is, so uh, BrickBest is using PowerCube, right? Yeah, yep. Okay, is PowerCube Imperial metric or this is universal somehow? No, it's the same same materials, all, all, all Imperial that needs to be converted. So right now we're we're finishing up the the redesign, like there's a few minor simplifications or decent simplifications that we did. We're running the workshop on, on July 10. The finalized file should be ar around in like a week or so. Um, okay. Maybe by next Sunday we'll have the finalized file. It's, in, it's all in SketchUp. Uh, there's very good developments on the, actually the power. Um, we're looking at a gasifier and it looks very feasible. So we've got a guy that's working with us on that. And we're looking at an 8 inch by 36 by 36 inch pancake that's slapped onto the front of the power cube for a four four gasoline gallon equivalent of fueling using charcoal so it's okay. looking really positive and, and the form factor makes it practical so that we can actually use it not not experimentally but for real so okay. so we're looking at that's going to be a workshop that we're holding here on on july 16 17 um looks like 15 16 17 so at that time we're going to see how practical that is yeah and it should be, I mean, it's it's really good because there's a lot of people doing uh, this kind of work. It's low-hanging fruit for practical purposes. It, it appears so, so we'll, Perfect. we'll see on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, so at the moment, this is not something we can replicate straightforwardly here. Argue uh, for reasons without yeah. redesigning the metric. Yeah, you got to redesign it for metric. Uh, there's okay. the there's the Indian guys that uh, we should ask them the guys who are doing the the build who've done a replication in India I think they I think they might have converted there to metric I, we should ask them for their files I I didn't really follow up with them but they're they are building a, I mean they did build an older version I think they actually used the well I think what they did is they used the old blueprints so okay. I guess that doesn't help us um, okay. Cool. Okay. Um, what else? We have 3D printer. 3D printer. Well, uh, yeah, we're starting next week with it. Okay. So not much news unless you got some points on our previous week's conversation about controllers and that. No, no, that's. I think that's that's good, and we'll just roll with it. And I'll I'll write a an agreement between us. I'll get that to you okay. like by by the end of the week or something. Perfect. Um. Mm -hmm. um yeah, so we should go like for very low cost controller and you know a decent controller. So yeah, we gotta decide whichever way you want to go. So, uh, and we see what savings we get actually with the end design. Yeah, so we can basically check in on that as that's going, just like we're checking on the torch table and all that. Yeah, mm -hmm. we'll start a similar file for the three printer and document and stuff. Mm -hmm. and Excellent. Cool. Yeah, so that, that's pretty much it, what I had in mind for this week. Uh, I think that's it for me. Let's see anything else. I think that's it. Okay, okay so maybe, let's maybe do... The aquaponics, just a quick update. How are you guys getting on? Uh, it's good. Right now we're, we're working on getting... Uh, okay, so the workshop is currently being planned for the end of July okay. with the open source, fully open source files. Right now we're working on getting some subject matter expert to help us be an instructor on that. We're looking at Mark McMurtry, who's one of the seminal 
He's like the inventor of that back then in, in the 80s. We're going to see if we could get him or somebody else to help us run it. Otherwise, we'll... Um, yeah, I mean, we, we want to find some... We're, we're just... We're looking for that person right now, so... But that's going on a schedule that's going to be for end of July for the build. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, I'm yeah. in touch with Paolo in UK. Yeah. Uh, so we're trying to figure out the stuff we can do with UCL, for example. Uh, UCL? Yeah, in London, University College of London. University uh, College of London. So they're pretty much concerned with sensors right now, so we're trying to figure out if we can get the sensors developed somehow. Yeah, and they're all, they're all on board on open source? Yeah, yeah, all, all here, on mm -hmm. all fronts. So okay. everything we were saying about educating Urena and all that stuff, everything is open source compliant. Ashra compliant? Yeah. Okay, and that's that's written clearly in their in their funding documents, or? Uh yeah, it's not as far as the funding documents, but I wrote design principles which pretty much state this. So. Do does everyone have buy-in? Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's good. So there, there are no concerns on that front in terms of collaboration, whatever comes up. Okay. Cool. That's it. Excellent. Okay. So we'll talk right. same same time next time. Um. Yes. Uh, can you do maybe Thursdays? Thursdays, okay. About the same time. Okay, Thursday works better for you. Um. Yeah, I've got some other meetings, so I'm trying to congest all the meetings in one day of the week. Uh, to get more stuff done. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that uh, Thursday. Cool. So. What time Thursday? Yeah, can we do the same time? So noon noon time for us and your time would be Yeah, 7 my time PM? is seven in the evening. Yep. Um cool. Okay. Great. Talk to you next week. Okay, talk to you next week. Thanks cool. a lot. Bye. Mm hmm Bye bye.